Welcome to this presentation on seven keys to a happy, thriving hospitality business with me, Yvonne Halling, Bed and Breakfast Coach. A little bit of housekeeping, make sure that you have a pen and paper handy to take notes. And if you can shut down all other distractions and give yourself this time to fully absorb this information. And then if you have any questions, do email me at yvonne at yvonnehalling.com and I'll be happy to answer them for you. So just let me take a couple of minutes in case we haven't met yet to explain who I am and why you should take the trouble to listen to me. So I ran a bed and breakfast in the Champagne region of France for 17 years and I ran it first as a hobby business and then in 2010 after the financial crash of 2008-2009 that little B&B &B business that I'd only ever run as a hobby became our only source of income and I had to grow that business. And I went from less than making 10,000 euros a year to making 104,495 euros in two seasons. Took me two seasons to get there. And I consistently made over 100,000 euros in the subsequent years. I had just four rooms and I did not use any of the online travel agents to do this. I think this is quite unique. I, had, I listed with none of the online travel agents to make this huge leap in income. In 2013, I started Bed and Breakfast Coach because other people who were interacting with me on online forums where I was uh, sharing what I knew that worked were asking me to help them. And so I started giving out free advice and information 2013. And then in 2014, my knowledge and my experience was turned into B&B &B Moneymaker Bed and Breakfast Business Transformation Programme, which is the fastest and smartest way to start, run and grow an independent hospitality business anywhere in the world. And since 2014, we've been helping owners worldwide to double, sometimes triple their income, work less and have more fun. Everything that I teach and everything that I share is from my own experience and that of my clients. Nothing is from books that I've read or from the hospitality industry itself. And I certainly don't have a marketing degree. So everything that I'm sharing is tried and tested first by me and then by my clients and it's all from our own experience. So the seven keys then to a happy thriving hospitality business, what are they? Number one is understanding your business model because whether you know it or not you are operating from a business model and I'm going to show you how that works. Key number two, how much money do you want to make what is your financial goal and why do you want to make that money? It's important to have a financial obje objective when you set out on this journey. Key number three is how to attract the right guests for you at the right price in order for you to make your financial goal that you will identify in key number two. Key number four is delivering an exceptional experience at your property to those guests that you most want to serve and, and to those guests who are willing to pay your higher rates. Key number five is building an emotional connection with your booked in guests before they arrive. And key number six is encouraging repeat business from your community or database. And key number seven is attracting new guests without OTAs. This is the formula and we're going to go through each step in turn. And I've also included some links to further resources underneath this video. So key number one, your business model. Like I say, whether you know it or not, you are operating from a business model and it's important to understand what your model is because your business model will determine your future. So the first business model that I see out there in the marketplace is very, very common. And it looks like this. You get bookings, 
usually from OTAs, online travel agencies like Booking.com, Airbnb, Expedia, those guys, VRBO. And then you give them a great experience at your property and then you wait for them to write a review. And this is the model that is used for most of the properties that are listed on Airbnb and many, many of the properties, possibly 80, up to 85% of the properties listed on booking.com. You get the bookings from the agencies, you give them a great experience to the best of your ability, and then you wait for the review. And with this model, there is a fair amount of anxiety around the reviews. I see this a lot in my bed and breakfast owners group. They talk about, you know, the guests said they had a great time and they, they marked me um, a nine or, or they marked me an eight. Why didn't they mark me a 10? They said they had an amazing time. Okay, you're really very much at the mercy of the reviews and you don't have much control over where your bookings are coming from or indeed the price. And this is what you look like when you're listed with those online travel agencies. You look pretty much the same as everyone else. There's nothing much to differentiate you or, uh, except on price. And that's usually your main point of differentiation. And there's a fair amount of discounting and deal making, negotiation and haggling on price going on when you're using this business model. The second business model is the one that I see owners uh, evolving into when they get a bit fed up with online travel agencies and the games they play and the commissions they charge and the anxiety around the reviews. It's pretty much the same model, but there's the added complexity of their own website and social media accounts. But there still isn't that much control over the bookings, where they're coming from. They may get some direct bookings through their website, but they're, they're heavily reliant on online travel agencies still. And they don't have much control again over the guest experience and the review process. And also there's quite a lot of uh, feast and famine with this model, where in the spring and summer business goes uh, up and in the autumn or the fall, business tends to go down. And it's the sort of up, down, feast, famine thing going on, which is, causes a, a quite a lot of anxiety as well. You, because you don't have much control over your revenue, you don't have much control over the type of guests who are coming. It's kind of anybody will do as long as they'll pay. And you don't have much control about where the bookings are coming from. And the truth about this, and I don't mean to be harsh, but I, I want to be honest with you, that neither of these two business models that I've just shown you will enable you to have a happy, thriving business over the long term. It just won't. So I want to introduce you now to a different business model. This is the framework for the fastest and smartest way to start, run and grow a direct bookings hospitality business anyway. I developed this model for myself when I needed to keep the, uh, the bailiffs from repossessing foreclosing on my home. I needed to grow my bed and breakfast business from the hobby low income model that I was running into a thriving and professional hospitality business that made enough money to support me and my family. So I developed this business model and over the years I have perfected it and honed it and this is the model that we share with all of our clients, take all of our clients through and it works. So this model is responsible for my own rise from almost losing my home to making more than 100,000 euros a year consistently year on year. It's also responsible for hundreds and thousands of extra dollars, euros, pounds for dozens of our clients worldwide. It's responsible for mending relationships and it's responsible for restoring peace of mind and ease for owners. So if that sounds good, keep watching because I'm going to take you through the rest of the steps on how to make this work. So this model will do five things for you. It will give you a strong premium position in the market for the guests that you decide you want to welcome who will pay more for your higher value. It will deliver a five-star experience to your guests for more five-star reviews. It will increase the amount that the guests spend with you, meaning more money, fewer guests and less work. 
and it will control the flow of direct bookings across the seasons so you're no longer at the mercy of the online travel agencies. And perhaps more importantly of all, it will dramatically increase your confidence in your abilities and your capabilities as a host. So let's recap on key number one, your business model. You must identify the model that you're working from and then understand that you'll need to change it to change your outcomes. Because doing the same thing and expecting different results is madness. Your outcomes are not going to change unless you change your business model. Because the one you're using right now is getting you the results that you're getting right now. The model that you're using right now is not capable of getting you any different results. Let's move on to key number two. How much and why? You need to identify what you made in the last 12 months if you are established. And if you're new and not yet established, what do you need to make in the next 12 months? And if you're established, what do you need to make in the next 12 months also? And what is your motivation for doing that? Now, motivation comes in many shapes and sizes, but I want you to click on the link below this video when we finished here and download the free bed and breakfast income calculator and tutorial on how to use it to help you see the potential of your business and how much money you are leaving on the table. Clients are often shocked at the potential of their business and the gap between what they've been struggling to make and what they could be making. It's really quite an eye opener. So I encourage you to download this free tool and the tutorial to help you see the potential of your business with the right business model. Now it's important. Why is it important to have uh, to identify your financial goal. You need to know what you'll do with the extra money that you're going to make and what will happen if you don't make your goal. Get really clear on that. Now motivation, it comes in several forms and the main forms that it comes in is towards motivation or away from motivation. Humans are generally geared to move away from something to avoid a potential disaster. And then sometimes humans are inspired with a burning desire to go beyond, which is towards motivation, to go beyond what they've already experienced. Away from usually comes first because humans don't like change. We, we resist changing until we absolutely have to. I know this was true for me. So you've got two types of motivation, towards or away from. If you have a burning need to avoid a potential disaster, you're, you are away from motivated. If you have a burning desire to go beyond what you've already experienced, then it's aspirational and it's towards motivation. And as I say, away from usually first, followed by towards. With no plan and no goal, you'll drift along getting nowhere. And with no reason why, you'll lose interest and you'll lose your motivation. The right, with the right plan and a goal that gives you meaning, you can accomplish anything. So let's recap on step two. What is your financial objective for the next uh, 12 months? Make sure you've got that written down. Understand your motivation for reaching it. Is it away from because you want to avoid something or is it towards something to be aspirational? And then identify what will happen if you don't reach your financial objective. Key number three, offline and online. You need both. In the old days, when I started in 2000 in my bed and breakfast business, we didn't have the internet and I used to print brochures off and I used to get business cards printed by Vistaprint and I would leave them with the local tourist office and other small businesses that I 
worked with in my area. And I hung a sign outside and I waited for people to come. There was no way of connecting with any guests personally. I just waited. But now we have the internet and we have to utilize the internet to broadcast the promise of the experience that we deliver at our properties. That's what the online world is for, to broadcast the promise of the experience you deliver at your property. And this will create a strategic and integrated online infrastructure that supports your offline business. Everybody needs this. Your business is offline. You deliver your hospitality on a person to person basis. Even if you welcome people remotely, it's still offline. If you think of a plumber, electrician, a physiotherapist, or anybody who delivers service offline, that's the same as you. You deliver an offline experience, but you need the online presence to broadcast the promise. Okay, I hope that makes sense to you. You need both the offline and the online. Now we're going to go through my framework for the fastest and smartest way to start, run and grow a direct bookings hospitality business. And we're going to go through each of these four key elements in turn. The first one is strategy. Who do you want to welcome and why would they choose you? Instead of taking any bookings at any price, I want you to think about who you would love to welcome and what price do you need to sell your rooms at to reach your financial goal in key number two. And the calculator will help you determine exactly this. And then we need to communicate what you offer offline, everywhere, online. There are customers for every price point. It's up to us to choose based on what we need to make to support us. It's up to us to choose what price point we are going to position ourselves at. Now, many people in the independent hospitality industry, and I was one of them, begin as a hobbyist and then they may be migrate up the pyramid, the value pyramid here to generalist. But very few get to the specialist or expert categories because they get stuck at the generalist, taking anybody and everybody at any price and discounting and using online travel agencies and worrying about the, the guest experience, worrying about the reviews because they have not taken the trouble to identify themselves as a specialist or expert. Now you might be watching this and thinking, well, I can't be a specialist, but I'm, I'm here to tell you that everybody can be a specialist on their area simply because you live there. I know that you impart information to your guests around the breakfast table, when they arrive, or even remotely by tech, by using tech, but you need to Use that insider knowledge, that local knowledge that you have, the specialist knowledge that you have, use it online and position yourself online as that specialist or expert. Everybody can do that. Just takes a little bit of rethinking and repositioning yourself because if there's one thing I know for sure, there is no money and there's no fun in the hobbyist and generalist categories. All the money and the fun is in the top two categories of the value pyramid. So you must endeavor to move up that pyramid so that you can experience a happy, thriving business that you and your guests love. Good online positioning will give you great guests at higher prices and conversely, poor online positioning will bring you disrespect for inappropriate guests who haggle for discounts and no one wants that. So let's recap on key number three. Determine who you want to welcome and what you will need to charge to reach your financial objective and then elevate yourself to the specialist or expert positioning online. 
Okay, key number four. We need to deliver an exceptional experience at the property every single time. Again, we're creating a strategic and integrated online infrastructure that supports your offline business. You're going to promise an experience online and you must deliver on it at your property offline. So going back to our framework, we're going to the next element, which is structure. And we are going to deliver an exceptional experience for your guests. And there are two elements to this how you treat your guests and how you treat yourself. And both are equally important. How you treat yourself makes a difference, a huge difference to your guests experience. How are you spending your time? Are you doing the cleaning and the laundry and other low value tasks? Because when you're doing these tasks, who's doing the high value tasks? like getting the guests? The answer is no one because there isn't any time left. And this affects your guests because when you're doing the cleaning and the laundry and the low value tasks, even if they don't see you doing it, they will sense your low self-esteem. They will disrespect you and they could violate your boundaries. This is a vastly overlooked area in, in independent hospitality. And I would say to you now, some people really enjoy cleaning and washing and ironing, and that's absolutely fine. I'm not saying that you'll never do that, any of that, but you can't make it your job. And if it is your job and you like doing that, then I would venture to say, you may not be cut out to run a B&B &B business as a business person and that's absolutely fine. But just know that about yourself. If on the other hand, you're doing the cleaning and laundry and other low value tasks because you're telling yourself that you can't afford to hire help, then we must address that. Guests don't want the responsibility of making decisions when they're with you. What guests really want is to feel like you've got them covered they need strong boundaries so they feel safe and secure with you and they want opportunities to feel great about themselves. If we look at Maslow's hierarchy of needs, you'll see that I've drawn a line between the basic needs and psychological and self-fulfillment needs. What many owners do is that they focus on meeting guests' basic needs like soft, comfortable mattresses, crisp linen sheets, delicious breakfasts, that kind of things, warmth by the fire. And those are all lovely. But guests who travel have already basically got their basic needs met. Guests who haven't got their basic needs met simply don't travel. They can't afford to. So you want to be focusing on the psychological needs of your guests, which is a feeling of belonging, a feeling of being in a relationship with people, a feeling of accomplishment. You need to focus your efforts and your marketing and your messaging on guest psychological needs, not on basic needs. You cannot give this when you're not taking care of your own psychological needs. Now, if you're living hand to mouth and you're worried about money all the time and you're stressed, guests will feel this. They won't be able to articulate it, but they will be able to feel it and that will have a direct impact on them. So let's recap on key four. How you treat yourself directly impacts your guest's experience. Constantly taking care of low value tasks yourself will zap your self-esteem. Guests want their psychological needs to be met, not their basic needs. They've already got that covered. Number five, key number five is the concept of a business engine to automate three important systems of communication. And we're going to go through each of these three systems of communication. So remember, we're creating a strategic and integrated online infrastructure that supports your offline business. We know that this business model 
is heavily reliant on online travel agencies and we know also that when we add the complexity of an extra website and social media accounts that this is not bringing you the results that you want because the main I, the main element that is missing from this model is what I call a business engine and it's a bit like having a fancy car that looks all pretty and glossy on the outside with fancy seats and fancy gadgets inside but when you look under the hood there's no engine and it can't go anywhere so when you look at your website it might look great you might have a glossy website with some professional pictures done you might post on social media about your delicious breakfast and and, and your gardens and your flowers but without the engine that can't go anywhere for you it just looks pretty so going back to our framework now we're in the third element of the framework for the fastest and smartest way to start run and grow a direct bookings hospitality business anywhere and we're now in systems systems as your business engine in my experience of helping owners since 2013 99 percent of hospitality businesses do not have an engine so why do you need one you you need to create your own micro ecosystem freeing you from outside forces and online travel agencies to be able to attract direct bookings whenever you want them and to reduce your reliance on the OTAs easing the feast and famine of the high season low season free up your time and make more money with less work and who doesn't want more of that <laughs> And your engine will become a vehicle for your creative ideas. If you've got a ton of ideas bouncing around in your head and you have no way of making them happen, then a business engine will be your vehicle for your creative ideas. And it will dramatically increase your revenue and give you such peace of mind. And also, it will give you a level of professionalism that very few other owners have in this marketplace. So what is this engine? It consists of your community. You can call it an email list, a customer list or a database. It doesn't matter. But it consists of a community of three types of people. Guests who have booked but not stayed yet. Guests who have booked, stayed and left and guests who haven't yet booked with you, future guests. And you need all three types of people inside of your community, not on Facebook, not in your online reservation system, but in your community or database, yours. Without your own community or database, the OTAs have your community. This is the shocking fact about the, it's a shocking secret, about the online travel agencies because they have your community they won't share it with you you know that when guests book with the online travel agencies they're given uh, an OTA email they're not they're not sharing their real email with you because they want to keep it from themselves because they understand the power of the database and they have millions and millions and millions of people in it they have your guests in it and they won't share their details with you. And they're marketing and selling to your guests, to your community. They're marketing and selling flights. They're marketing and selling car hire. They're marketing and selling insurance. And they're even marketing and selling rooms in the bed and breakfast or the vacation rental down the street from you. They don't care because they understand that with a community, you have got a source of bookings. Now, systems number one is for the guests who have booked but have not stayed yet. Here's what generally happens. Somebody books, pays a deposit and receives an email confirmation. And then a little while before they arrive, they get a pre-arrival email with, you know, check-in times and other useful information that they'll need to arrive safely 
And then after they've left, you maybe request a review or the OTA is requesting a view. Now here's the problem with this, right? This is all pretty much going on automatically through your online reservation systems. But the problem with this is that between the time they book with you and the time they get the pre-arrival email, there is a time lapse. And they, that could be a few days, it could be a few weeks, it could be a few months. And during that time lapse, a couple of things potentially could happen. They could become uncertain about their decision to book with you. They don't know you. They don't know if you're real or if you're a scammer. They have no idea and they could become uncertain. Doubt could creep in. Have I made the right decision? What's it going to be like? Am I going to look bad in front of my partner or spouse or am I going to look good? And they become susceptible to cancelling. And we have to head that off and stop that happening. You must bridge the gap. You must bridge the time lapse by building an emotional connection with them sending important information about their stay, things to do in your area, and be available to help them. Let them know who you are and put their mind at rest and ease their doubts and fears. And reduce the risk of cancellation. Let's recap on key five. Your business engine is your community of guests, past, present, and future. The OTAs have built their community of your guests. For your current guests, you must bridge the time lapse to reassure them and avoid cancellations. So let's move on now to key number six, encouraging repeat guests from your community. So back to our framework for the fastest and smartest way to start, run and grow a direct bookings hospitality business anywhere. And we're still in the systems part of our formula here. And we're moving on to systems number two, creating reasons for your past guests to return. So we know that we need a community. We need to build that email list, that customer list or that database. And it needs to be filled up with three types of people. We've looked at booked in guests and now we're going to look at past guests. And I want to just reassure you here that your past guests really do want to hear from you. They do. Because they want to experience again the emotional connection that they had with you. They want to relive their memories that they created with you and they want to imagine themselves staying with you again. When you communicate with them, you maintain the emotional connection and you maintain your positioning as the specialist expert. You stay top of mind for them. So when they're thinking about coming to your area, they're only thinking of you. It allows you to create bookings whenever you need to. And if you don't communicate with them, they're going to forget about you for sure. It's way easier to get repeat guests from your community than to constantly seek new guests outside of it. Because you've already built the know, like and trust factor with them. They already know you, they already like you and they already trust you because they've stayed with you already. And you are meeting your guests' psychological needs by giving that sense of belonging and that feeling that they've accomplished something, that they're part of the insider group. You've, they've got a relationship with you and you're, meet, you're meeting their psychological needs. So let's recap on key number six. It's way easier to attract repeat bookings than to constantly focus on new ones. Your community is your best source of bookings, not online travel agents. And your past guests really do want to hear from you. I promise you they do. And you're meeting a psychological need by inviting them to return. And that really means that if you're not communicating with them, then you're doing them a disservice. So let's move on to key number seven now, attracting new guests without online travel agents. So here we are back in our community, our email list, customer list or database. We've looked at booked in guests, we've looked at past guests, and now we're going to look at future guests. 
you need to create a downloadable free giveaway. Your free guide is your calling card online. It positions you as the specialist or expert. It showcases you without selling anything and it builds relationships that turn into reservations. Again, meeting your guests, psychological needs, giving them a feeling of being in the know, being part of the insider group, being part of your community and having a relationship with you meets their psychological needs. So key, recap on key seven then, your downloadable free guide positions you as the specialist or expert. It demonstrates your local knowledge online. It attracts guests without using online travel agencies. So here's what we covered in the seven keys to happy, thriving hospitality business. Key number one is understanding your business model. Key number two is how much do you want to make and why? What is your financial objective? Key number three is attracting the right guests at the right price for you, for you to meet your financial objectives that you identified in key number two. And key number four is delivering an exceptional experience at your property, meeting your guests' psychological needs only. Key number five is building an emotional connection with your booked in guests so that they, you don't run the risk of them cancelling. Key number six is encouraging repeat business from your community or database by keeping in touch with them. And key number seven is attracting new guests without online travel agencies by means of your downloadable free guide. So there's some links below this presentation with resources for you. You can download the free bed and breakfast income calculator and tutorial, which shows you how to use the calculator to, de to determine the potential of your business. You can come join our International Bed and Breakfast Owners Lounge. It's just $10 a month and you can cancel anytime. The link for that is below. We do monthly workshops and we have a thriving community inside that lounge. And then finally, if you want to get going and take some action on some of the steps I've shared with you today, then go ahead and grab the Bed and Breakfast Owners Toolkit. It contains nine of our very best strategies to help you just for $29.99. Thank you so much for your attention today. I'm Yvonne Halling at Bed and Breakfast Coach. You can find and connect with me on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, and yes, even TikTok. It's been my pleasure to spend time with you. I hope it's been valuable for you. Take care.